a segment that uh, I call the Geek Zone. Um, and it's uh, where I'll cover, you know, kind of areas of interest to me, technology that we use, uh, but also things like how we plan our trips, uh, things we take into consideration. Um, the reason for this is that when I very first started sailing and thinking about, you know, getting out there and cruising, it's really intimidating. I mean, how do you start? Um, how do you know what to expect? Uh, and there are a million, you know, opinions as to kind of the different technologies or gear or, you know, techniques or whatever uh, that you should use when you get out there to uh, start your sailing life. And so this will be really kind of geared toward new sailors who are just wondering, you know, how to get started. That's what this section is all about. So for a lot of you who don't care about this stuff, that's why I'm putting these little stingers in. So when you see it, you can just fast forward and go to wherever you want in the video. Uh, but for those of you that are interested, um, we think this is kind of pretty cool stuff. Uh, we've done a lot of research and, and use the stuff that we're going to be showing you pretty extensively. Day sailing and taking the ICW and doing offshore passages in all kinds of conditions from, you know, no wind to 45 plus knot squalls. So hopefully you'll get something out of this. Uh, but anytime you see the Geek Zone and want to just skip through this, uh, sometimes there's a lot of information. So feel free to jump forward. Geek Zone. Okay, so the first thing that we want to cover today is how we plan our trip. And there are two primary tools that we use. Uh, Waterway Guide Explorer, which is uh, an internet web-based planning uh, tool that allows you to kind of lay out your trip beforehand, uh, know what you're going to encounter along the way, and just really plan each leg of your trip. So I'll walk you through that first. And then the next piece is uh, iNavX, which is an iPad-based chart plotter that we use on our boat. Um, so once you get the trip planned in Waterway Guide, before you ever set foot on your boat, uh, then you can move to uh, iNavX or whatever chart plotter you're using and start laying out actual waypoints uh, based on what you've planned in Waterway Guide. So those are the two things we'll be showing you. So this is the uh, home page for uh, Waterway Guide. And what you can do is just select the area uh, for which you're in which you're going to be cruising. So for us, obviously, that is uh, the southern uh, region, which will include uh, the Gulf of Mexico all the way around from Texas to Florida. So I'll just click on that. Okay, so I've centered in here on uh, Galveston Bay, which is where we started uh, this Carib trip. Uh, for us, we, we do have uh, the printed guide on our uh, boat, but we really didn't use it a lot. We uh, primarily used Waterway Guide Explorer here online to plan the trip. And then we also have the Waterway Guide uh, Explorer integration with our iNavX chart plotter. So all the information that you're seeing here, we were able to see uh, in real time, all the time, whether we were uh, online or offline. And that became very important, as I'll show you here in a moment. So again, this is the uh, area that we began our trip. Again, came out here and then sailed across offshore to Sabine Pass. Now, uh, you know, why did we do that run? Well, I wanted to get an offshore, a short offshore run in for the boys before we hit the ICW because uh, from Sabine Pass uh, really to New Orleans, it was all going to be ICW. And we did that so we could take short hops and anchor each night. The boys, I don't think we're just quite ready for full on 24 hour uh, shifts for a week on end. So anyway, this was our first pass. And, and the way that I planned this run was not only just, okay, this is a close inlet, but what you can do is click on uh, this measurement tool 
and I'll close that real quick. You know, assume whatever cruising speed you're going to have. For us, I always assumed five knots, just taking it slow. So leaving from uh, this spot, uh, coming out of the channel, I'll click there. And then how far is it over to the Sabine Pass uh, Inlet? And you see that it's uh, roughly 45 miles. So that told me that, you know, that, that was completely doable within a day. And you see that it also gives you not only the nautical miles, but also the bearing. Uh, this just gives you a, a great tool for figuring out what is your general course, uh, how many nautical miles are you looking at for that course, and uh, lay out your trip that way. So I'll turn the, the measurement off, but I used that measuring tool really for every single leg and every single day, just kind of looking at how far we could get and what are the anchorages and or marinas within that range. So it's a really fantastic tool to be able to plan that out. And then another thing I really like about Waterway Guide that is far superior to Active Captain are the chart options you have here. So again, you can switch between NOAA charts, Fugawi charts, and Navionics sonar. So again, we use Navionics gold. So being able to see you know, the charts in the format that we're going to see them on our chart plotter was very, very handy. The way that I typically, the charts I typically used for, for general planning are the Fugawi, which is the uh, kind of standard chart uh, by default that you'll get when you come in. So anyway, that's, that's just another big advantage for waterway guide. Now, as you remember, as we were coming in, uh, we started having our engine trouble here. And um, so as we were coming up the Sabine Inlet, I had initially planned, and let me click on the uh, Anchorage icons, I had initially planned to anchor here. And I'm going to zoom into this area, kind of show you what is shown on the charts. So my plan, an original plan, was to put us roughly in this area. Uh, that would put us close to a marina if for some reason we needed to get in there. Thankfully, I had the uh, waterway guide integration with my iNavX chart plotter application on my iPad. So all of this information that you're seeing, I had it on my charts. So that was great because when we started having our engine trouble, I knew we needed a place where we could potentially work on the engine. And I was able just to click on this icon on my chart plotter, get the information for the marina, and uh, have a place for us to pull into. So this is where we ended up. And as you know, we stayed here at the Sabine Pass Port Authority Marina for about a year getting our engine uh, repaired or, or replaced, actually. So this is my review of the marina that you'll see. It was a great marina, great people. So it's, a, as far as I'm concerned, a very... Uh, highly rated uh, marina. Another thing that I want to show you though in terms of reviews uh, and crowdsourcing is this is the uh, information that I provided for this particular anchorage. So as I say here there is uh, a lot of shrimp boat traffic that comes in and out of this area and then what makes it kind of worse is as you can see just by the charts the best spot to anchor is probably in this area. But again, with all of this uh, shrimp boat traffic coming in and out it and the ships coming up the channel here, you get a lot of, you know, wakes and, and problems. So it it is an anchorage. It could be used, but I've put it as a pretty low rating as an anchorage. Uh, the other problem you run into is you see all these obstructions and this platform this area is used to salvage uh, offshore drilling rigs. So there's just tons of, uh, you know, big platforms laying in here, uh, crab traps, just all kinds of, of problems. So, you know, I think it's, it could potentially be used, but it certainly is not a, a great anchorage. But it's great that Waterway Guide provides uh, the ability for we cruisers to uh, provide both our reviews and to suggest additional information uh, about a specific anchorage. So a couple of more things that I'll show you about the typical way I used Waterway Guide Explorer to plan our trip is I went through each kind of one of these and 
as I said earlier, I started kind of laying out, okay, how many miles are we typically going to be able to do in a day? And so you can start just, you know, going along your path. If you click and hold, uh, you can keep this running. And so you can start to look at how many miles you're going to be covering, what you're going to be running into. So I see this bridge here. I keep going here. And again, if you remember that, you know, what we're trying to do is roughly, you know, 50 to 60 miles at the most in a, in a specific day. And then you see, okay, where are the anchorages? I'm at 18 miles, 20 miles. Okay, so I can keep going here, 22 miles. Let's keep going. Now we're up to roughly 25 miles. Okay. Should I keep going? Yeah, I think I can probably keep us moving here. So we'll keep moving through this. So we're now up to 42 miles. So this is starting to get into a bit of a run. So now I need to start looking at, okay, what, what do I have in front of me here? I've got 45 miles. Do I have any anchorages or marinas or anything else that I can use? And what you'll see here is sure enough, at about 50 miles, I'm seeing this Bayou Show Peak. So now that we've finished planning each leg in Waterway Guide, we move to iNavX to start laying in actual waypoints. And this is how we do it. So this is the actual iPad that we use on the boat for a primary chart plotter. It's an iPad 2, so I can't output this video uh, direct. So I'm having to film it so you see all this kind of crazy patterning. Uh, that's just because I'm uh, filming the screen. It obviously doesn't have this uh, crazy pattern when you're using it on the boat. Um, but this will do for now just to kind of give you a sense of how we use it. So we just talked through laying out every leg of the trip um, with Waterway Guide Explorer. And so one of the things that allows for you to do is, is go ahead and, and lay out a float plan for specific distances and times and you know where you're going to be each night. Here is uh, the example of the float plan uh, we laid out showing that first anchorage at Bayou Show Peak. Um, and so once we get that done in Waterway Guide and have everything planned, then we want to come into iNavX and start laying out the uh, same trip uh, here. So where I'm uh, zoomed into now is uh, near the Corpus Christi area. And I'll go ahead and come into Matagorda Bay. And you see as you zoom in, uh, your charts begin to update. Okay, so I've zoomed in a little bit here to show you how uh, you add waypoints in iNavX and how you start laying out your actual route, uh, the trip you're gonna take. So let's say that I wanted to uh, start my route coming up the uh, ICW entrance here off of uh, Matagorda Bay. So all you do here is just uh, touch a specific point and that will bring up information uh, specific to that, that location, those coordinates. You see the coordinates up top, uh, you see uh, general information for range and bearing uh, and then all of this other info here. So if I click on the uh, icon here, what that will do is place a waypoint that you see here. And then if I come back and click on that waypoint, um, it will uh, allow me to drag it to wherever I want it. So I can move that around. So if I click again on that waypoint, that brings up this pop-up which allows me to edit it or add it to existing uh, routes that I already have. Um, or I could set a go-to point uh, for steering a specific heading, all of those options here. For now, I'll just hit edit. And uh, that brings up this window to allow me to put in notes, descriptions, um, whatever I wanna do. For now, I'm gonna rename it. Okay, so let's just say that what I want to do is, is name this to a specific leg. So maybe this is, uh, or day, we'll just do that, day uh, one. And then whatever other descriptor you want to give to it. So maybe this is uh, marker one. Um, so, you know, again, it's just whatever you feel you need to name it to kind of keep track of what's going on. 
Um, and so this is how you do that, hit done. And now you see the marker uh, has the new title. And then you would continue to lay in those uh, waypoints uh, all along the way where you're going to be traveling. Okay, so what I'll do, this is where we just were. I'm going to zoom out here and move us over to Sabine. And right now I'm showing, you know, all the uh, waypoints that we have set. So I'm going to turn that off for now. Show waypoints. We'll just do route. Um, hit done there. And now you see that leg one uh, show up with all the uh, waypoints that we set. And obviously, you can set as many waypoints as you want. Um, the more accurate, more waypoints you set, especially in areas like the ICW where you're definitely not sailing straight courses, right? Um, so you could set all of these, which would give you more accurate uh, distance. But because we used Waterway Guide to measure these very specifically, uh, we already know what the actual distance is going to be for the sail. So these waypoints for us, at least in the ICW, are really more for uh, information than actually showing us where we need to go. I mean, obviously, we're going to follow the ICW, so navigation is not that big of a deal. Uh, but what is a big deal, uh, typically, is information to me about things that I'm going to encounter and where I need to prepare for those. So an example of that is um, this is the Natchez cut. And so what I've done is, and, and they want you to uh, place a call when you're entering on uh, channel 13, as you see here. Um, so it's just a kind of a traffic uh, issue that they want you to, to call as you're entering the cut. So that's what I put here in this, this waypoint is to uh, use the radio uh, to call as we're entering the cut. Same thing for, you know, as we continue to go through here, I've no noted here that this is a bridge that we're going to encounter. Um, and this, uh, the note in Waterway Guide was that we needed to call at least four hours ahead of time call this bridge that we're going to be coming up to, the Ellender Bridge. That lets me prepare and make that call at this point uh, for the bridge I'm going to encounter here. So again, uh, this tells me that the uh, uh, bridge is in this location. I'll just move this and kind of show you that. So there's the Ellender Bridge. Um, so it gives me that information, and then here is the last waypoint that I set for where we had planned to anchor. So here you can see our entire trip for day one and uh, the way in which we've laid it out uh, in our chart plotter. And this is the way that uh, you navigate. Uh, again, doing all the planning online before you head out, uh, you know all the distances, all uh, the marinas and bridges and everything else you're going to encounter and then you bring that information over into iNavX and lay this uh, in for your specific waypoints um, and again you can label or put in descriptions for each of these things to prepare you for what you're going to be running into as you move along. So it's just a, a fantastic uh, integration uh, that allows you to really go out with quite a bit of confidence uh, of what you're going to see. Because again, when you're cruising, you're always going places that you have no idea about. And so uh, between chart plotters and planners like Waterway Guide Explorer and, and their printed guides and all of that information uh, really takes the edge off of um, you know, going out and, and exploring the world. Hit the like and the subscribe button. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Smash we'll make that like button in the face. Yeah, I'll make that next video <laughs> if we get 10,000 likes. <laughs>